So if you're new to Stadia and you're wondering what's next for the platform, I'm enjoying playing Cyberpunk or Assassin's Creed Valhalla or insert whatever games you have. I'm enjoying cloud gaming. It's better than I thought it was, but what does the future hold? Can this realistically be my only gaming source or is there just not much to look forward to in the horizon? Well, let's tackle that subject because like many of you, especially a year ago, I had that question myself. Fast forward though to 2020, well and well, things have changed quite a bit. Let's take a look at what the future holds for Stadia in 2021. Let's take a quick look at what has happened since Stadia has launched. And before I go further, please consider subscribing to the channel as I cover daily Stadia and cloud gaming content. Hit that like button so the algorithm can find more new Stadia hopefuls to the channel to learn more about this platform. So a year ago at this time, Stadia was admittedly a bit of a dumpster fire in quite a few regards. There was a lackluster lineup of games. Some games were not running at 4K 60 FPS like Google kept touting what this platform was capable of, and there was a crap ton of features missing that were promised. I said it on this channel even a year ago. Stadia was in a full-blown beta and we were the paid participants. I held no punches despite the fact that I was covering Stadia because I do tell you guys the truth on this channel. But one thing that I realized despite all of those flaws was that this thing worked insanely good. I thought cloud gaming wouldn't possibly be truly ready for many years. Well, Stadia fixed that misconception extremely quick, and they've had the most important part functioning since the start, and that is just that it flat out works and it works well. But what about now a year later? What transformations has Stadia gone through? What have they learned? And is this platform still of a bit of a mess a year later? What can we expect in 2021 and beyond? Well, let's go ahead and take a quick look at a bunch of things. When Stadia started the year 2020, in January, they had announced that 120 games would release on Stadia in its first full year. Fast forward, the platform has overshot that number and is sitting at around 135 titles. Now consider this, in January, we had no idea Deal what was coming ahead in regards to massive delays all across the industry due to CV-19. Many games have been delayed, yet Stadia did manage to over-deliver on that promise. Fast forward today, Jack Buser, Stadia head of games, has now told us over 400 games are in development right now from over 200 studios, and then they are already looking ahead to 2023. Now let's back up a little bit. Recently, in an interview with Stadia's VP John Justice, he mentioned him and his team will no longer over-promise like they did a year ago, mentioning how games can run 4K 60 FPS, for example, and that they rather just let these new features roll out and leave people be impressed and let word of mouth do the talking for them. Essentially, don't overpromise and underdeliver, but rather do the opposite. They have now stayed true to that word in all of 2020. I have been covering every single piece of news that has come out since Stadia has launched. They have come out, according to the Stadia team, with over 100 features since then. Now, these can be as small as just improved audio with your headset mics or as big of features like YouTube Direct Streaming or anyone, and I mean this, anyone anywhere can be a streamer on YouTube just by launching it off their own Stadia UI, making it the absolute cheapest way to become a streamer in 2021. But that wasn't the only feature we've seen in 2020. Family sharing has now been launched. If you're a new Stadia user, you can share your entire library with your friends and family, and they can play your library completely free. A new UI has rolled out, but I will admit this is still anywhere near perfect, and it still needs a lot of improvements all across the board, but they are at least hammering it out, and they're making sure that it's functioning better. We now see the launch of Ubisoft Plus on Stadia, as well as Stadia Pro, including over 30 games on just sign up, making that Netflix model more and more prevalent for those who want to spend their money with that type of model. But some of the absolute biggest things to have launched this year is just more access to more devices, more countries. We saw the launch of Stadia on more Android devices as when this first launched, it was just limited to just a few phones, guys. Now it's playable on most, and this includes the recently added iOS devices. We also recently just saw the expansion to eight new countries, but admittedly, again, there is so many more that they need to reach to. Also, free-to-play titles are now available on Stadia, making it to where you can demo Stadia completely free without having to invest a dime and essentially get a console in the cloud completely free. Overall, the biggest steps going forward for the Stadia team will continue to just make Stadia be the most convenient and versatile platform available.
available and just getting it in the hands of more and more people and launching as many games as possible. And I actually have a massive list of features that I'm staring at right now that the Stadia team has gradually improved this platform by by pretty huge leaps in just 12 months. This thing does not look like it did a year ago when it launched and it's really easy to forget how much was missing and how much we have now. Little things like Stadia messaging between friends, achievements, new Stadia user profiles that look cleaner, Stadia's tandem mode, and this is just a fraction of the things that they've worked on. But despite all the good that Stadia has done, the work guys is far from over. There is still more devices that need access. Being on Android TV has to be an absolute priority. Right now, playing on a TV is only possible with a Chromecast Ultra and a Stadia controller unless you do non-official things like sideload the app but your Stadia experience won't be the greatest. Games releasing more consistently day in day. And while I think this will change in this upcoming year and you'll see that consistency, it still needs to happen. All games running at 4K 60 FPS. Stadia needs to hold developers accountable and make sure they are utilizing the full power of this platform. Games like Doom Eternal and Division 2 can run Stadia at its peak performance and look amazing and run great, so there really is no excuses for other big AAA titles to not least give us a visual or performance mode option. Obviously guys, not all is completely rosy yet with Stadia, it's still far from a perfect platform. But the state of Stadia in 2021 is far and wide, in my opinion, the best this platform has ever been. You can tell the investment in the future is there, with so many games in development, Stadia owning multiple studios of their own that are building cloud-only games. Guys, keep in mind, when you don't have to develop for a console sitting in someone's living room or PC, you can stream your game from these massive data centers powering some of the most insane hardware. The limitations of what you can see in a video game erase. Imagine the unimaginable. Whatever your dream game is on a massive scale, it can be possible with something like Stadia, and that's the future of what this platform can hold. Then we take a look at the general gaming landscape, and Stadia will be seeing these AAA titles that other consoles will see. Far Cry 6 coming in 2021, Resident Evil Village, we just saw the release of Cyberpunk 2077 run better than most consoles right now. Stadia is an evolving gaming platform that will just continue to get better on the back end all the while you're just gaming. You're not seeing all this magic happen like we did this past year with features dropping left and right while we're just busy doing our thing. Stadia's future will continue to go down this trend and you can tell the team has gotten a lot better at not only communicating with its gamers by hosting founders forums and a reddit where they talk to the community, but they have learned from their past mistakes which is what I was hoping to see as a consumer. To realize if I wanted to continue to invest my money into this platform and to realize that they are at least learning from their past mistakes. The future of Stadia and what you'll see mostly going forward in 2021 and beyond from all accounts will focus on more features, more and more games, and more and more accessibility, and just flat out making Stadia itself more powerful with faster load times, more instant gaming, at least this is what's been told, and after what I saw this past year, I'm gonna say that I completely believe them because they have been delivering in 2020. But of course, it's up to you to decide if Stadia is right for you going forward in 2021. Let me know your thoughts on Stadia's future going into 2021 and beyond. What has impressed you the most or what has disappointed you? Where do you wanna see Stadia continue to improve on and will you remain using Stadia for the foreseeable future? Let me know all that down below and make sure you're hitting that like button and subscribing as I make daily Stadia and cloud gaming content. I'm Sunny, and like always, I'll see you guys in the cloud.